So there's enough poison in the fugu to kill about 8,000 people. Welcome to Chopstick Travel, I'm Luke Martin, and today we have another episode from Tokyo, Japan. No Japanese food is more infamous than the poisonous pufferfish known as fugu. Only trained professionals are allowed to serve this dish. With the help of our friends from buyfood.com, we are going to be meeting up with a local fugu chef who's going to be showing us the process from start to finish, and then we are going to be trying this poisonous dish for ourselves. But make sure you stay tuned until the end because we are trying another poisonous Japanese dish. I am really excited. You are not gonna wanna miss this, so let's go. This is the restaurant behind me here. We are in Asakusa, which is an old part of Tokyo. So the restaurant's very cool, kind of old uh, Japanese style building. We were just talking with the owner of the restaurant and he was showing us a fugu that has already been prepared by the chef for takeaway kind of style. So the poison has actually been removed. You could take this one home and prepare it at home um, without any worries. So. We're going to try, I think, that one as well as a fresh fugu. So we are just checking out the live fugu pufferfish here. Unfortunately, they're quite cute, but very poisonous. Don't let their looks deceive you. We are in the kitchen with the chef. He would have had to do a very rigorous exam in order to be qualified to prepare this fugu, poisonous pufferfish, so our life is in his hands, but I trust him. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, when he cuts the blood, we'll spray. Spray. So, be careful. Okay. That's the most poisonous part. Okay, so this is the most poisonous part, the, the liver. So, you only need to eat like tiny, tiny bit mm. and it's too much. So we were standing a little back yeah. to I don't get, get any... the splatter zone. <laughs> yeah, blood splatter Apparently, can be dangerous. the blood can be dangerous. Yeah, it, this is actually a little bit gory. Yeah. Um, wow. Oh, but there's this is... the eyeballs. This is the sashimi. Wow. So the chef is hard at work here. We've been asking him questions. Maybe that wasn't the best idea because he's been answering our questions while cutting, but I'm sure he's an expert. So we were just asking about the way that they actually dispose of the poisonous parts of the fugu. And what he has to do is actually freeze it in a locked box. So he has to lock it with a key and then he takes it to Toyosu Market and a specialist will uh, get rid of that poisonous fugu. So this is the most poisonous part right here. The insides, mainly the liver, but some other parts. Check this out. Eight thousand. Wow. <laughs> so there's enough poison in the fugu to kill about eight thousand people, or more, or more than that, even more. Wow, that's uh, intimidating to say the least. So the most important part is to wash the blood thoroughly off of the meat, so that it looks like this when it's finished. The chef is finished now. He's cleaned all of the poison from the pufferfish. This is called a tiger pufferfish, I just learned, by the way. So actually the skin of this species is not poisonous. However, some are, and look at this, this is the, the puffer part, the skin of the puffer. 
we can eat this. Okay. Can you ask him how many fugu has he prepared in his life or a, a ballpark? <laughs> He's counting. 33. Wow. So, so his estimate is about a thousand actually a year and he's been doing this for 33 years. So I think we're in good hands. That's 33,000 buffer fish. And now the final step, he is slicing the raw sashimi fugu meat very, very thin because apparently it's actually got a tough texture. So they like to cut this sashimi extra thin and he's plating it up. We're going to have the fugu in a couple different ways, but this is the most traditional and popular, which is the sashimi. So what are your thoughts on the preparation of the fugu? Oh man, that was masterfully cut. That was incredible to watch. Although it was gory, it was amazing to see his skill just, you know, taking it bit by bit apart and so fast and no mistake made. It was incredible. Well, we'll, we'll see. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine. We are sitting down now in the restaurant. We are sitting in this beautiful private room and the owners have served us two types of fugu sashimi. So you can see they look similar, but actually they are different. This one here is the one we just watched the chef prepare. So it's a little bit shriveled up because apparently when you prepare the fresh fugu, the meat actually shrivels. And then we've got some of the skin and some chunks of meat that have been boiled. Over here is one that has been refrigerated in a wet cloth overnight to actually help rehydrate the fugu sashimi. So I am a little bit nervous, but it is time to try the sashimi. It looks really good. So I'm gonna actually try the fresh one first. So you can see that it's paper, paper thin. I've never seen sashimi sliced so thin I can barely pick it up with my chopsticks. And there we have it. I'm gonna actually take one of these green onions and maybe kind of wrap it up. And then we also have a ponzu sauce here that I'll dip it in. There's uh, a couple things in here, some chili and some daikon radish. And let's try the infamous fugu sashimi. Mm. The meat has a very interesting texture to it. It's got a lean, almost crunch to it, but at the same time, because it's thinly sliced, so thinly sliced, it's very easy to chew. So you can taste that texture or feel that texture. The flavor, slightly sweet. I think I, got, I have to try one with less uh, of the ponzu sauce. So let me go in and try one of the overnight rehydrated pieces. Look at how thin that is. Just a very tiny dip of the ponzu this time. So I can taste that natural flavor. Mm. Mm. Oh, there is a subtle flavor. It's not ocean, it's not seafood flavor. It's a little bit sweet. It's got that oiliness that kind of just melts in your mouth as you chew it. That is really good and I think I'm fine. That tastes awesome, better than I expected. So I'm going to try some of this fugu skin now and maybe a piece of the, the meat together. A little dip in the ponzu. This is pretty interesting. I thought actually before coming here, I was not aware that you could eat the skin. I thought that that was part of the uh, poisonous part of the fugu, but apparently not. Mm. Mm. A little bit rubbery, but then that chunk of meat is very soft. She is preparing us right now a nabe, which is sort of like a hot pot. There's vegetables inside. We have the fugu meat inside and it is cooking up and she is helping us prepare it. And she's actually given me a little piece of the meat, a really thin cut of it. And I've put it in the ponzu sauce and I'm gonna give it a try while it cooks. Mm. Oh wow, that meat's actually very delicate, very soft, mm. really good. The flavor is coming from that ponzu sauce, but the meat 
has an incredible texture. I also have some of the nabe, but this is a different cut of meat. So this has got some bone, and apparently the longer you boil it with the bone, the more flavor that's released. It's all with a little bit of broth and some ponzu and then a big chunk of tofu. So let me try to break off a piece of tofu if I can, and then maybe break off some of this meat. Oh, there's a lot of bone. Let's try tofu with the uh, hot pot fugu. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious with that ponzu sauce. Citrusy. Mmm. This is much better than I had expected. The flavors are really delicious. Luke really talked up this fugu sashimi, so it is my turn to try. Going in for a nice thin slice without any onions. Dip it in a little bit of sauce. Here it goes. Mmm. Yeah. Super fresh. All I can taste is freshness. Our third and final fugu dish is a beautiful plate of fried fugu karage and a little bit of lemon on top. And this stuff looks so crispy. Very, very crispy. I'm just gonna go in with my fingers. Mm. Oh. There's not as much meat. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. You think it's gonna be like fried chicken because it's similar taste on the outside, just that oily, deep fried crunchiness. But then the soft fugu meat inside, this is probably the softest preparation of the meat. Maybe too soft. It's not mushy, but it's very fall apart. Not as much texture as the sashimi. I'd have to say I really, I love the sashimi, my favorite. Mm. Finished off with our fugu meal. That was absolutely delicious. Much better than I had anticipated. Honestly, that's gonna be one of the best fish. I've ever tasted. I definitely recommend when you come to Japan to try it out. It's not as scary as we may have made it seem, but I think we've lived to tell the tale. Don't try that at home though. What'd you think of your first fugu experience? Oh, that was so fun. That was so awesome. Everything was really tasty. Had a great time. So we're finished off with fugu, but that's only our first stop of the day. We have another stop. We actually have to head pretty far across town for our second Japanese delicacy, and that is called unagi. So we've come to a suburb on the outskirts of Tokyo. Actually, we're on the outskirts of the city of Chiba. And we're going to the Unagi restaurant, which is Japanese eel. It's one of my favorite things to eat in Japan, and I haven't had it on this entire trip, so I'm getting pretty excited. So we are inside the restaurant now. It's a beautiful, just uh, one, two, three, four, five, six seater restaurant. The chef's gonna start preparing the eel. The most common preparation is just grilled on rice, but we're going to have it in several different ways. It's a very versatile fish. So we're gonna see what the chef has in store for us. E, okay. Okay, so we're about to cut up the eel and apparently gets a little messy, a little blood splatter here and there, so we are covering ourselves in some plastic. And uh, yeah, I'm ready. So although not as poisonous as the fugu, the blood of these eels is still potentially uh, very poisonous. And if it can get in your eye, it can also make you blind. So you need to be very careful. Awesome. The way that the chef is cleaning the eels is quite unique. So he actually starts by killing the eel by severing its uh, spinal cord and then using a nail, he'll actually puncture the head and hold it to the cutting board. And that way it's much easier because these eels are very slippery. 
<laughs> you can see they're going all over the place. And these are live eels, but he's put them in the refrigerator for several hours, so their body slows down with the cold. He is also cleaning the intestines of the eel because we will prepare a dish of grilled eel intestines, something I've definitely never tried before, but sounds very interesting. First, second, third, fourth. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Just getting the charcoal ready for grilling the eel, but we're going to start preparing another dish, which is very interesting. It's the eel inside of an egg roll, so it should be pretty interesting. So the chef just prepared a really interesting dish, that umaki tamago, the eel inside of the egg. He started with sort of a scrambled egg mixed with some dashi stock. He first put it on top of this special frying pan, which is like a square frying pan. It makes one layer and then he flips it very expertly over top of some eel and makes it into a roll. And then he does a second layer and then a third layer. All the while he's flipping it up in the air and forming this perfect little uh, egg eel roll. Really cool preparation. Skin down. Next up was the grilled unagi. So after the charcoal was done heating up, he used this really red hot looking charcoal to grill the unagi, very smoky, and you can actually see the eel shrinking in size. It's on a couple little skewers to allow him to keep flipping it, but maybe he only grilled it for six or seven minutes, and then it's put into a steamer for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the thickness and the size of the eel. <laughs> Right. So all of the dishes have been prepared. The chef masterfully created some really interesting dishes using only eel and a few other ingredients. This one I'm looking forward to trying a lot. This is the uh, tomago, so the egg with the eel inside. I've never tried this before, but uh, let me try it out. Mm. Wow. Oh, it's so soft. Mm. The eel and the egg almost have the same texture actually. It's a little bit salty and you can taste that smokiness of the eel. But wow, the, the texture of that egg is just incredible. Mm. Mm. Oishi. <laughs> so this is all of the extra parts of the eel. So the liver and the stomach, the intestines, and it's been skewered and then grilled and you can see there is black charred bits 
all over it and dipped in the sauce, which uh, is a little bit sweet. So let me try this. Hmm. The sauce is a strong flavor, but you can definitely taste a little bit of gaminess from those intestines. Actually, quite gamey. Not my favorite, but still pretty good. So last but certainly not least, the piece de resistance. This is the eel, grilled eel on rice, and it's served in this lovely lacquer box. You can see, wow, that just smells phenomenal. And this is one of my all-time favorite Japanese foods. So we've tried several different dishes today. Um, both animals have some poisonous qualities, but they are definitely tasty if you know how to prepare them right. So definitely don't try it at home to prepare on your own, only if you know what you're doing or you've taken a test. But let me try this eel. Oh. Mm. Oh, that is just like butter. It just melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So smoky. The flavor of that sauce is a little sweet once again, but it goes so well with the smokiness of that eel. But the texture is really what makes this dish so good. It is literally like butter, completely falls apart and melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You don't even need teeth to eat this at all. Mm -hmm. All right guys, that's it for today's episode. What an experience tasting two of those very unique Japanese seafoods, the poisonous fugu and the eel, slightly poisonous as well, but not as poisonous. If you didn't check out the previous episode, hit the link down in the description box. We tried some extremely strange seafoods here in Tokyo. Thank you once again to buyfood.com for helping us with this video. If you guys are looking to book your own Japanese food tour, hit the link down in the description box. They've got all kinds of tours all across the country. I can't promote them enough. Thank you so much. And we will see you again on another episode of Chopstick Travel soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.